expectation. So Lord, uh, we're here and I pray that um, we would be able to set aside everything, everything in our lives right now so we can be fully present because you are fully present here uh, in this space. And so Lord, this morning's yours. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. All right, you can have a seat. So as I always remind us um, every Sunday, uh, it's my heartbeat and I believe and I'm hoping it's the heartbeat of us, and that is we believe that following Jesus is the best way to live, that we choose to follow Jesus, and we're learning how to follow Jesus together, and that means learning how to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbors ourselves. where we're learning how to live and love like Jesus, and when we come into a space like this, this is a chance to be together as a family, as a community of people committed to living that out, it's a chance to celebrate that life that we're living. It's a chance to practice many things in this moment, whether it's singing, it's reading scripture, it's listening to teaching, it's praying, taking communion, practicing things that will realign our heart with God's heart so that as we leave and go into the week that God has before us, that we're able to, to live and love like Jesus. And not only alone, but my prayer is that as we gather also, is that we, we become closer together one another. So as we go out into the world, as Jesus sent his disciples out in the world, he sent them in twos and threes. It's a whole lot better to follow Jesus with others than it is to go out there and try to do it by yourself. Amen? So, um, so this morning, just some reminders. Uh, our bathrooms are getting there. They're almost there. So uh, 
the renovation on them is almost done. So in the meantime, there's a bathroom down here, down the hall, and there's a bathroom down the hall here, and there's a bathroom in our quiet room back there um, if you want to or need to, to use those. Uh, we believe that our offering, our tithes and our offerings, our giving um, to the church is actually an act of worship. And so we don't pass baskets because of that. We want it to come from, one, from ourselves as we give back to God who so graciously gives to us. So we have giving boxes in the back that are there for your convenience. There's envelopes if you want to use them so you can drop whatever in those boxes. And know that all of our tithes and offerings go towards the ministry of this church um, so that we can continue to be the people that God um, has called us to be. And we have three prayer stations that you're welcome to go check out. All of them have prompts. There's one on that wall. There's one back there where the candles are lit. And then there's one where that trellis is. So I encourage you any time in the morning to feel free, even in the middle of something, even in the middle of my teaching, if you get prompted to go to one of those stations, please do. Don't feel like you're limited um, to this space. So I'm going to pray. And I know there's a lot of illness going on around right now. COVID's back. Uh, there's many people not here today because uh, COVID has hit their families. And um, I know it's hit the the school. I'm trying to keep my high school runners away from people who have it so they don't get sick. Um, but it is it is back. It's still here. So I want to pray for those that are sick. And then we have a lot of folks traveling as well. So I'm going to take a moment and pray. And then I'll set up what we're going to do, do next. So let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we do again thank you for this morning. Uh, Lord, we thank you um, for the many ways in which you bless us. And so, Lord, I pray that, that as we give back to you this morning in the form of an offering, uh, Lord, that you would take it, you would bless it, you would multiply it, that you would use it in fantastic ways so that we can continue to love the community that you've called us to love, the, the community of Patterson. Uh, Lord, I pray for all of our friends and family and neighbors that are traveling right now on this three-day weekend. Lord, I pray you would keep them safe. May your traveling mercies be with them at all times, and may the time they're taking away be restful and restorative and redeeming so that they can um, live into the life that you have for them. And Lord, we pray for those that are sick. Uh, there's many in our immediate family right now that are sick, whether it's recovering from surgery, um, it's dealing with a lot of pain waiting for surgery, or um, just having COVID or a bad flu or cold and around. Lord, we pray for your healing. I pray in Jesus' name through the power of your Holy Spirit. You know who they all are, Lord. Heal them, restore them, strengthen them so that they can live into life to its fullest. And I pray that you would meet all of their needs if they have them. Um, help us, Lord, to have ears to hear and um, that we would discern your spirit moving in us if you prompt us to go to someone who is sick or hurting and in need of help. So, Lord, this morning is yours. And, Lord, we just ask that you would prepare our hearts for what you want um, to speak into our lives this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we're going to um, practice what we've done the last few Sundays. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And we're going to begin with some silence. So close your eyes, and I want you to try to silent the noise in your head, all of your thoughts, everything you're thinking about, your schedules, your even today. Just try to free yourself from it. And if you need to use the word of Jesus to do that, um, to, to clear your mind, I want to give you a couple of minutes of silence. And then we're going to do a Lectio Divina, and Kristen's going to read it this morning. It's a passage of scripture that many of us know well, and you're going to hear it and you're gonna hear less of it, and you're gonna hear less of it, and you're gonna hear less of it, and then it will lead us into worship. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. The 
The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. more than enough for all of 
satisfy me with your love and all I have in you is more than Last week, um, we were talking about the rich young man who came to Jesus. You can leave that going, Gabe. <laughs> um, helps me keep staying key. The young man came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, I've done all of these things. And he just went through the list of everything that he'd done. And Jesus said, you know what? Yeah, all those things are really good. Those are good things. Uh, but there's one thing still that you lack. I want you to take all that you have and I want you to sell it and I want you to give it to the poor and I want you to come follow me. And it says that he went away sad. He went away downcast. He went away brokenhearted because he was wealthy and he had a lot. And he was living the way the world did and, and it meant he was going to have to walk away from all of that. And as I reminded us last week, Jesus' desire from us is that we would, we would let everything go that the world tells us to live for. And we would just come and follow him. So I want to teach us a song this morning that we'll probably sing over the next bunch of weeks. And it's about surrendering. It's about laying things down so that we can follow better, so that we're, we're not hindered in our ability to follow Jesus and the song's called Make Room. It's literally talking about laying things down so that we can make room for Jesus so we can follow him better. So let me teach it to you. Here is where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender this is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. Let's sing that again at the top. Here is where. Here is where I lay it down. Every bird and every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down, every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender, and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want to, here is where, here is where I lay it down, every bird and every crown, this is my surrender, this is my surrender, here is where I lay it down, every lie and every doubt, this is my surrender, I will make To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you. To do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room. want to, to do whatever you want to, shake up the ground of my tradition, break down the walls of my religion, your way is better, your way is better, shake up the ground of my tradition, break down the walls of my religion, your way is better. you 
want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you, to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. Here is where I lay it down, every burden, every crown. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. Every lie and every doubt. This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. You're all I am chasing now. This is my surrender. I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to, and I will make room for you to do whatever you want to, to do whatever you want to. The Lord, that's our heart's desire is that we would be able to respond the way in which the early disciples did. You asked them to lay down their nets and come follow you. And it says they laid down their nets and they went. Lord, I pray this morning that um, whatever we're holding tightly to, whatever burden we're holding tightly to, that's, that's hindering us from living into the life that you have for us, hindering us from being able to follow Jesus fully, Lord, I pray that we would surrender it. We would just surrender it so we'd create some space, some room in our minds, some room in our hearts, some rooms in our souls so that, so that you can have your way. So, Lord, this morning I ask that you would have your way. You'd have more of your way so that we can follow Jesus, who is the way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys. So it is that time where we get to share the things that are bringing us joy in life. And it can be this week. It can be this month. Hopefully there's been a lot of little things and big things that have happened this year because the year is almost over. Crazy. Um, so right now... Go ahead and hop on up. You can find someone you don't know or someone you do know that you haven't talked to for a while or someone older or younger or just anyone you want to speak to and share your joy. Go ahead. Go, go, go.
All right, let's start heading back to our seats. Kristen's going to do our announcements for us this morning. All right. Good morning, everybody. So nice to see you all. Um, if you did not get a handout this morning and you would like one, just raise your hand and we'll make sure that we get one to you. Um, if you do have your handout and you are new, if you wouldn't mind filling out the bottom so that we know who you are and how we can be praying for you, that would be awesome. If we do know you and you just need some prayer or you want to volunteer or anything, if you want to join this um, catalyst training that's coming up that I'm going to tell you about in a second, all of that can go on our communication card and you can just drop it in the giving boxes in the back. Um, so... Let's see. Okay, so catalyst training. So here's the thing. I love Jesus, and I am a student of psychology, and I know that Jesus and psychology go hand in hand. So we are learning, right, to live in love like Jesus, but we also have these core wounds that keep us from loving ourselves and loving others well sometimes. So our training that's coming up starting in October, um, on Tuesday evenings, is Emotionally Healthy Relationships. We did earlier this year Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. So this is the same author, but now teaching us how to relate with one another in healthier ways. And again, continue that healing work that we started back in February or whenever that was. Um, so please, please, if you want to have better relationships or you just like people and you want to learn more about yourself and about them, or just hang out with us, sign up for this because it's really good. Um, if you were part of the other study, you know that there's like a daily silence practice and a devotion that you can do. And this guy has so many books and amazing things. And this time it's rather than reading um, the book like we had last time, there's like a workbook and the devotion book. And it just helps you go more in depth for your healing and it's really worth it. And if you've already done it before, Peter and I have done it. Betsy maybe has done it. Um, but it's a good thing to keep revisiting. You know, every couple of years if you're feeling like, oh, maybe I need to work on something new. Um, because we're always going to be a work in progress. And so it's good to just use the tools that are given to us to help us, you know, be better humans. So anyway. Highly, highly recommend that study. And if you're not able to do Tuesday nights, at least get the books and be going through it and maybe find some friends that you can meet with. You know, it'd be nice to have a big group together, but I understand scheduling is rough sometimes. So there's options. Just get the books and do it. It's amazing. Um, and this week, uh, Coffee George is starting back at the schools. Um, we're really excited. We're actually, we've been at Apricot and Creekside for the, Creekside for a few years, Apricot the last two years. This year we're trying to get all of the schools involved and just being able to go and show them love. So we would love it if you would like to be involved in that. We could use some help serving coffee. I know that George wants to be there, but there's going to be some days that he can't be there. So if you can come and serve the coffee, that would be amazing, and he can teach you how to do that. Um, we also need muffins. So... If you are someone who likes to bake and could make some muffins, um, if you would please make them and drop them off here between 10 and 2 on Tuesday, or better yet, make muffins and then come to Creekside on Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., um, then you can actually help serve muffins to the teachers and they can get to know all of us as we get to know them. And so we have Creekside coming up this Wednesday. Again, 7 a.m. If you want to come serve coffee and muffins, that would be amazing. If you're not able to come this week, please drop off muffins on Tuesday. And then on the 15th, we will be at Las Palmas. So another opportunity to serve coffee and muffins. And we would love for you guys to actually be there with us. So um, if you're interested, you can, on your communication card at the bottom, I'm going to hold it up again, put coffee on there, and then we'll know that we can contact you, and a phone number would be great. Um, so coffee and a phone number, and then we'll know that we can reach out to you and get you scheduled to help us out. And if you wanna just show up with muffins, that works too. So thank you, please do that. Um, and last but not least, church without walls, 
food pantry, we've been serving over 100 families every week. And if you're not able to be, if you can come on Thursdays, help prep boxes from, uh, now I said 10 and 2, 10 to 1 uh, on Thursdays. And then passing out the boxes would be fantastic. If you're not able to be here on Thursdays, though, and you want to just contribute food, food items are always appreciated. Our food focus for next week is canned tuna or chicken. And if you just bring them and want to put them on the cart as you walk in, that would be awesome as well. So thank you all for your continued support of that and everything we're doing here. Um, one thing I will say, last week from our training that we did, we were talking about spiritual gifts, and so many of us had exhortation show up on as one of our gifts, right? Um, that just means that we're good at encouraging people. So you might think, well, I don't really bake, and I don't know about serving coffee, but I like to encourage people. You can still show up and just encourage the teachers because teachers need a lot of encouragement. Um, so please, even if you feel like maybe this isn't your gift, try it out because you might realize that you really love it. You might connect with a teacher you might think, oh, well, maybe not coffee, but there's some other area that I can go and encourage people. Just start using your gifts, and you will find that on Sunday mornings when you're using your gift, and then we say the joy question, you're going to have more joy to share because you've been living into the gifts that you've been giving. So lots of information, lots of opportunities to share your gifts with others, and if you have questions about that, of course, you can talk to me or Peter or Susan or Clint or Ray, or Betsy, or anyone else that you ever see in this room, okay? <laughs> All right, now Betsy, if we have kids, or we can play, we are gonna pray, okay. We still pray for kids even if they're not here. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking of all these kids in my mind. There's like, I was counting in my head like 11 that are not here, so let's pray for the kids that are off doing something fun, I hope but I know some of them are sick. Lord, thank you so much for the gift of children and the joy that they bring to us. And so I pray, Lord, for the ones who are sick. Pray that you would heal them and protect others in their family who are not sick yet. And also those who are off having fun, I pray that you would bring them safely back to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give Betsy a hand. So um, I know a, a couple of people in here in regards to children right now. Um, I, I mentioned it a few weeks ago, um, just about my passion, and, and I hope it's a shared passion to just reach kids in our community um, that they might know Jesus and that families aren't coming to church anymore, so the kids are, are missing um, finding out about him. And um, so uh, one person in particular reminded me of Daniel who... Um, would pray religiously three times a day. He would open up his windows and he would pray three times a day in a culture that was not of the faith. And he found himself in some sticky situations, if you know anything about his story. And God showed up in miraculous ways and changed a culture. One guy praying three times a day. So I know a couple of you are doing that. And I'd encourage us just to pray for kids. Pray that they would show up. We have a lot of great churches in town. Pray that families would go back to church so that kids would come to know who Jesus is. And just three times a day. We eat three times a day. So why don't we just before we eat do that? I think that would be great. That would be great. So Galen, go ahead and um, jump ahead. So I just want to um, reemphasize what Kristen was announcing. Um, in October when we start um, going through emotional healthy relationships, In our culture, relationships are just, they're so messed up. Divorce rate is incredibly high. This month is Suicide Prevention Month. You'll see green ribbons and stuff around town. We've lost the ability to relate to one another within families, within marriages. I mean, if you think about your own life and the people that God has placed around you in your own life, there's probably some dysfunctional relationships with people. And we need to learn how to relate with others and the first part of it is dealing with us as we go into relationships so we can be super healthy and then God can use us in the lives of others. So I would encourage you to sign up because guess, guess what the number one reason um, people tend to leave churches? They have an issue with another person. 
Seriously. Conflict. Well, families have conflict. And if we're healthy, we're emotionally healthy, we can go, okay, you and I, Jay, right now, you and I, it's just, it's bad stuff, bro. So I'm either going or you're going. So, right, wouldn't that be terrible? So it's like, okay, let's go to Starbucks, get a coffee, and sit down, and let's work this stuff out. Because I love you, and you love me, and let's work. That's healthy, but our culture doesn't work that way, and in church it doesn't work that way. So please sign up uh, for it uh, Tuesday evenings, and I think you're going to gain a lot um, from it. All right. Get my, so we're going to be in the Gospel of John, not because we're going back to the Gospel of John. I just wanted to go back to a passage of Scripture in there, and we're going to be we're going to be in um, John thirteen, John thirteen, it's very specifically. Let me get this open. Come on, all right. Okay. So. Um, Betsy and I got married, and we bought our first house, and there were projects to do for me. New homeowner, my dad had taught me how to do a lot of things, so I thought I knew how to do a lot of things, but all of a sudden, I was having to do those things, and um, I, I consider myself, you know, pretty sharp guy, you know, and uh, so I'd start working on projects, and, you know, we'd get something, and it came with directions, and I'd go, I'd look at the box, and I'd look at the picture, and I'd pull out the stuff and all the parts, and I'd go, I got this, you know? And I would put it all together, and there'd be pieces left over. <laughs> and you're like, at some point, this, this isn't going to work. At some point, this is gonna, it's working right now, but at some point, something's going to break down, and I honestly don't know what these extra pieces are from, okay? Then there were other times when I would be putting together, and I just couldn't do it, and Betsy was around, you know, and it was one of those throw the hammer moments because you're just like, this isn't working, you know? And I remember getting the first IKEA furniture when that stuff, you know, totally different way of putting things together. Getting so frustrated. So in my maturity, I learned as the years went by, open it slowly, read the directions, <laughs> watch a YouTube video, read the directions, lay it all. Seriously, right? There, I've improved. I've improved. So um, if you've been to my house, we get a lot of direct sunlight on the back of the house at, at the wrong time of day. Like when you're eating dinner and you want to be hanging out, we just get hammered because of the direction um, that our house was built. And so I got these really cool shades that they have. Clint has them at his house. You know, they come with a crank. You can pull them up, um, crank them up, and then you can bring them back down. And these things block the sunlight so well. So I got one to try it out. And um, I opened it up, and I thought, it's just a shade. <laughs> I mean, it's just a shade. Two brackets. It says it's 96 inches long measure it, and bam, done. So I do the first one. It took like three tries for me to get it right, and I was getting a little frustrated, and I did look at the directions. And by the way, the directions came with a template, and very specific, and I wasn't, I was ignoring that thing. So, but I, I did it after two tries. So then we waited a while before my pool party, and I went and got a second one, and it looked exactly like the first one. So I measured the first one, and I just went and put marks on this beam and thought, I'll just put it in. So I put it up, and it's like this short. And I had drilled the brackets in and everything, and I'm going, are you kidding me? So I, I look at it and go, okay, I'm this short. So I take it down, and I move the brackets in, and I drill some more holes, and I put it in, and I moved it in too far. I go, are you kidding me? And I had to do Next time you're at my house, go look at the beam. There are so many holes, it looks like a woodpecker. <laughs> so, um, Jesus, when he invited us to follow him, he gave very specific directions. He did. He laid out, he laid out a template. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. He said, Lay down your nets, come follow me. And I command you to do this love God with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then before he left, he said, Go and teach others to do likewise. Go make disciples. Pretty clear. 
pretty clear. So we're in this series right now that I'm calling Essentials to Following Jesus. And last week we focused on this idea that we've been invited to come and to follow. And I believe we're given that invitation every day. Every morning when I wake up and get out of bed, the invitation is there for me to respond to that statement, Peter, come and follow me. Come and follow me. And I have, I have a moment right there to choose to or to choose not to. And it's a daily decision, I believe, that we make. The Apostle Paul told a group of people in a letter that he wrote to them, he said, I want you to follow Christ as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Jesus. It's discipleship. It's looking to someone who is following that way so that you can learn to follow the same. So over the coming weeks, I'm going to share with you how I follow Jesus. Okay? This is how I follow Jesus. And it's going to gradually take us through a journey. And today's is a starting point, a really specific starting point. And for me, um, the greatest thing that I, I think when I began to understand what following Jesus meant was when someone invited me to come and to serve in some capacity, to do something for others. Now, before we do this, um, we need to look at Jesus' life if we're going to follow him. And Jesus had a, a rhythm of life that he had. There was a way he lived his life every single day. And you could see it. And then when you live into all of these different things that we're going to go over, you're going to recognize that, oh my gosh, this is, this is why Jesus did this. And this is when Jesus did this so that we can live into it the same way. Um, it's learning the life rhythms of grace, which Eugene Peterson, Matthew 11, in his version of it, he talks about learning the life rhythms of grace, which means the ongoing work of God uh, in his life. Learn those rhythms that Jesus wants to teach us so that our life rhythm looks like his. If you read through the Gospels, you'll notice that Jesus began every day with time alone with his Father. It says that he would, he would go out in the early morning. Remember, in Jewish culture, Morning began when the sun went down. Night was the beginning of the next day. So Jesus rested, and then he got up, and he began his day with time alone with his Father, where he spent time listening to him. It says in Scripture, Jesus didn't do anything that the Father didn't tell him to do. He cultivated that relationship with him. Then it says in many of the Gospels that he would then gather his disciples together, those that were following him. And he would begin to build relationships with them, and he discipled them in those ways. And then it says that they would go out into the world. They would go out into the world missionally to go to the marginalized people and help them redeem and restore their lives. And you see that in Jesus' life every single day. He had a devotional life devoted to his father. He had a connectional life devoted to the people who were following him. He had a missional life. It was consistent. It was predictable, it was fruitful, and it was reproducible. And it was essential that his followers learned it so that their lives could begin to look like these. So I said the most essential thing for me to begin and where I began my journey was just beginning to do things for other people, serving others. So let me give you a little context to the passage we're going to read um, today. In the time of Jesus people's feet got dirty. He walked around, sandals and stuff, feet were dirty. And when you went into a home, it was expected that you would clean the dirt off your feet. So if I, I came home and there was nobody there, I'd wash my own feet. But if there was somebody there, in the hierarchy of things, the lowest person would wash feet. So if, if to put a modern context on it, if I came home and my feet were dirty because Betsy's the woman and back then the culture, it's not that way now, she would wash my feet. Okay. Uh, if I came home and my son was there, he would stop what he's doing and he would wash my feet. To not wash your feet was being disrespectful of the home that you're in. Okay, so keep that in context. Let's, uh, let's read Matthew 13. I'm going to read these verses. We know this, but... But just listen to what's going on here. So we're in John 13, verses, what did I say? 
Yeah, it's kind of scary when the wrong words come out of your mouth. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. Please feel free to do that. All right, so let me read this, and then we'll pray. So before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So, he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. And then he began to wash the disciples' feet drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. You won't be a part of me. There's all kinds of different words. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and head as well, Lord, not just my feet. And Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over doesn't need to wash, except for the feet, to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. And that was what was meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I've given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. Um, Lord, I pray this morning that our hearts would be open to receive that which you want to speak into our lives. Um, uh, may what I share this morning be helpful, truthful, and pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Jesus is in this moment with the disciples. He's coming in. Um, no one had washed their feet. They walked into this room and no one had washed their feet. They're going to have a Passover. They're getting ready for Passover. Kind of a sacred thing. And nobody washed anybody's feet. And Jesus comes in and you'd think the disciples would like stop and go, we're washing Jesus' feet for sure because he's here and we're here. They didn't even wash each other's feet. No foot washing was going on. And it should have been. And Jesus recognizes in this moment Powerful lesson moment. I'm going to wash their feet because they're not getting it. They're, they, they don't get me just in this basic thing. And so he takes the time to wash their feet. And of course, Peter, recognizing who Jesus is, says, you cannot wash my feet. And Jesus says, if you don't let me wash your feet, he's basically saying, you do not get me. You do not understand everything that I'm about. As you've walked with me, you've not understood the core, simple, basic of my heart. Jesus said, I didn't come into the world to be served. I came into the world to serve. Jesus said, the greatest among you are those who serve. You want to be great? Serve others. Um, the Jesus Revolution movie, many of it, how many of you have seen that movie? That's a great movie on the history of, of church in California. It was a, a huge movement um, where so many people came to know Christ um, through Calvary Chapel down in Southern California, Pastor Chuck Smith. And um, I was at Promise Keepers um, rally years ago which I'm really dating myself because some of you might know what that may not know what it is or some of you may know but it was a men's thing anyway he was speaking 
And he was talking about a, a moment when they were baptizing people in the ocean. And there was a young man that came up to him, and he was just so in awe of what had just happened. He goes, I want to do that. I want to baptize people. I, I want to be one of those guys in the water that just gets to do that. And um, Chuck says, okay, um, come to the church, come to my office Monday morning, 8 a.m. sharp. So uh, Monday morning comes, 8 a.m. sharp, the guy's there early, and he sees Chuck come in, and Chuck takes him into his office, and the guy's like, I'm ready. I'm ready to get ready to do this. And he goes, are you sure you're ready? And he goes, ah, man, I'm absolutely ready. He goes, all right, come with me. And he takes him down the hallway. And Calvary Chapel at that point was in a school, so it was a pretty big facility. And he opens the door to the storage closet, the maintenance closet, and he hands the guy a mop. And he says, it begins right here. Following Jesus begins right there. So what does it look like for you and I to serve? First of all, there's a devotional aspect to it. We have to remember who we serve. Okay. As you and I do anything in our lives each and every day, uh, the one we're actually serving is our Father in Heaven. So one of the ways we need to begin to change our perspective in all that we do, Scripture tells us we need to do it as if we're doing it for Him. Paul writes in Colossians, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than than for people. That means when you go to work, you may get paid by an employer. You're not working for them. You're working for him. Think about that. As followers of Jesus, as we just do our jobs that we're paid for, our attitudes, our heart attitudes, as we get asked to do things and everything. And I was a teacher, and we had a union, and used to just make my skin crawl sometimes because I'm listening and it didn't resonate with the Jesus that I knew. I'm there to love kids. I'm there to love parents. And yeah, I get paid. But I'm not working for that. I'm working for him. Um, I've mentioned to you that I have a spiritual director in my life, someone who uh, is, someone who cares about my walk with Jesus. And um, years ago, I had a previous director that I had for a little bit and he challenged me. He said, here's the deal. You need to get this. Because so much of your identity and everything is attached to what you do. And you need, to, you need to let go of that. You're serving him and your identity is not in what you're doing. So he said, this is what I want you to do. Every week, I want you to do something for others. In fact, I want you to find something you can do every week that serves someone else. That the world will never know. You don't get to tell anybody. No one is supposed to know. And I've held on to that. Because that keeps my heart in the right space. Can I go do something for someone consistently that you don't know? I mean, I'm your pastor. This is our church. This is our community. There's something that I do weekly in this community that you don't know. And for me to tell you about it changes the whole thing. I'm doing it for him. The connectional part that Jesus had. It's about serving one another. Paul writes in Galatians, For you've been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, family. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Remember the movie um, with the orange fish? Um, neat. Nemo, Finding Nemo, the seagulls, mine, 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 mine. That's sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. That means serving one another. Looking for ways in which we can serve one another. And I love that about you because you do that. We are called to serve one another. Serve one another in our lives and serve one another in this space. We're called to do that. It's written in 1 Peter, Each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. We're, 
we're called to serve one another. We're called to serve in this, this space. And sometimes, and I, I remember being this way, I don't really feel called to do that. I, you know, I, that's not really my thing. Okay? Kristen kind of alluded to that. We get to go to Creekside and love on teachers. It's not about whether you know how to serve coffee or you know how to bake a muffin. It's about you being there. You just, just you being there and loving the teachers as they come through with a smile. How are you? Thank you for what you do. The impact that that would have. What if we all showed up as an act of service? You know? What if we, in this space, were saying, Peter, how can I help? How can I help? How's the church need help? Where can I help? Where can I serve? Where can I serve? And serving outside of our comfort zone. Some of you have been in this church a long time. And I know for a fact, you've had moments where there was a need and you served outside of what was comfortable for you because you knew it was a need. We needed that, therefore I will do that. And I want to tell, a lot of you are older. And I keep having this conversation with, with many of you. Who you are is an incredible gift. Your doing becomes more relational now. And you can do things, but you can't do a lot of things. I mean, I'm finding as I'm getting older, the limitations are starting to be there physically. But who you are can be a huge gift. You can serve someone by just being a friend and being a part of their life. That's a huge act of service. And then missionally, Jesus went out into the world, and that's where he spent all of his time, was going and serving others to redeem and restore their lives. So I believe for us, it's looking for opportunities each and every day where we can serve where we are. So wherever God has you, how could you serve those people? The relationships you have around you, where your job is, your neighborhood, where, wherever you are, how can you serve in those moments? And our world is so self-centered that most people don't even think that way. I'm in Lions Club, a volunteer organization, and our numbers are going down because the younger generation isn't being drawn towards a place of service. I understand the Lions Club built that the bleachers and everything in the football stadium in this community. I would venture to say if we tried to do that again, current, a lot of folks would go, I eh, don't have time, I don't really got skills. We're living in a different time. But serving missionally, doing things for others around you, like the blessed thing we talked about with our neighbors, looking for opportunities to serve and do things for our neighbors is really huge. We're blessed to be a blessing. Um, John writes in, in the book of Acts, that Jesus said this, in all things I've shown you that by working hard in this way we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said it's more blessed to give than receive. Um, inviting others to come along with you as you serve others is huge. So um, our food pantry back here is just, it's such a testimony to this. So I was having a conversation with um, a friend of someone that came to work in the pantry. And we were talking about um, how amazing it is. There were 30 volunteers there on Thursday, 30. And more people are starting to come. And we gave out 162 boxes of food. The person's not a church person, a Christian. And they were so moved by what was happening there. And I was able to have a conversation with her and she's had a bad experience with church. But she loves this. And I said, did you get tired of this? Everybody talking about it? She said, yeah. This is different. Because we're not talking about it. We're doing it. I really believe to, to reach our world for Jesus now, that's where we meet people. We look for opportunities to serve and we invite other people to come along with us. And something happens in that. Something happens in that. I think our, our desire to be all about me changes. So the essence of who Jesus is, if we're gonna get this, is you live a life that's other-centered. You live a life that's other-centered. Now you get who Jesus is. You live a life that's others-centered. 
and the culture looks at it and they're like, what the heck? Because our culture does not live that way. They don't live that way. What if we lived completely other-centered lives? Now, we're made in the image of God. And Jesus has invited us to follow him and live all of the ways that he's shown us. I believe that you find yourself when you live into that. When you start to live an other-centered life, the way you look at your own life starts to turn and change. It does. If you don't think you have a purpose, serve somebody. Gandhi, who some of you may know, lived years ago. And um, he said, I really don't like the church, but I love Jesus. He said this, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. So let me um, end with this. Ray. We know Ray. He's on our leadership team here. I don't know if some of you recognize his faith journey in a short period of time. He's a fully devoted follower of Jesus today. But three and a half years ago, he was not. He drove his car into our parking lot to get food. He was recovering from a stroke that caused him to have to retire early. And he knew he needed to do something. And so he came in and asked if he could serve. And Susan, I don't know if he came to you. I, I know the first person who talked to him was talking in such a way with his stroke he couldn't process all the information. He was like, slow down. And when I come, I, I don't know what I'll be able to do. But he came week after week after week and saw God provide food out of nowhere. His ability to help increased, increased, increased to the point that he started driving around and picking up all of our food. He started inviting other people along with him as he'd go to pick up food. He discovered his, rediscovered his faith by doing Jesus stuff. And eventually he came in here. He committed his life to Christ in here. He went with us on the men's retreat. Fast forward. He's on our leadership team of this church. And he is so hungry to grow. Whenever I meet with him weekly to kind of talk about the logistics of things, we'll read a passage of scripture and he'll go, text me that. I've never heard that before. He's growing. And he's practicing Sabbath this weekend. I, he's with his um, son up at Tahoe. And he felt bad about not being here because he so wants to be here. And I said, dude, you got to practice Sabbath. You go. Did you see what happened there? That's how we're going to reach this community for Christ. So we need to be serving in some way and inviting other people to serve alongside us. And then they get to do the Jesus stuff. And that's where you live into your faith. So I'm going to ask you guys to reflect on this. And we just did a training last Sunday, so many of you learned some things about yourself. Um, we, have, we have some needs around here of things that we could live into and serve. And this message is being recorded, so those that aren't here will be able to listen to it. So I'm not just talking to all you. But next week, we're going to pass around a clipboard with some opportunities to sign up. And in some ways, we're revisiting some things. Um, but we're called to serve here. Um, we're called to serve at Creekside and help because that's something that God's doing. Um, we're going to have a chili cook-off that's coming, and we're called to serve in that. That's a missional moment for us. Um, but I'm going to pass that around. But I want you to, to reflect on your own life this next week in terms of you, your other-centeredness, and how you serve. Know that I'm grateful, so grateful, for the many ways in which you serve around here. Um, but there's other needs, and the crazy thing is we'll grow closer in a relationship as we serve together. We'll reach other people for Christ as we invite them to come along with us as we serve. And, and it's just an amazing thing to watch. Um, but I think it's the first step. If you want to follow Jesus, are you other-centered? And do you do everything as if you were doing it for him? So that's what I have this morning. So as we always do, let's just take a moment. And pause and reflect, what are you hearing? What did God speak into your life today? And what might you do with what you heard?
So as we uh, come to the communion table, uh, Kristen, do we have a couple? Mary and Clint? Okay. So Mary, could you go to the next table? Come on up, Clint. Clint and Susan are back. Yay. So as I tell us every Sunday, because we do communion every Sunday, scripture tells us to do it whenever we're together. Um, this table is, there's a lot of mystery to it. There's a lot of depth to it. So as we take this this morning, I want to remind us that before this happened, he washed their feet. <laughs> he said, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood shed for you. He did that after he washed their feet. He served them in the most humble way possible. So as we take communion this morning, let, let's just reflect on that. He was willing to do that for us so that we could live. Are we willing to serve people in our lives in such a way that their lives would be made whole and new again? So scripture tells us on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat and do this in remembrance of me. And then he took a cup of wine at the table and he blessed it and he said, this represents my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sin. All that selfish nature. And it represents a new covenant. Take and drink and do this in remembrance of me. And the Apostle Paul said that Jesus said to do this until Christ returns. So as we come forward, whenever you're ready, please feel free to come. Everybody's invited to the table, even in your limited understanding of it. Um, and you'll just take bread and dip it in the cup, and they will echo the words, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. And then we'll sing together. So let me pray, and you can come to the table whenever you're ready. But Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for the life that he lived. Thank you for the life that he gave. Thank you for his victory over death. His resurrection is our resurrection. We share in that victory. I thank you for these symbols, the bread and the cup, that we get to take and eat and drink to remind us of your love for us, the sacrifice you made for us so that we could have an abundant life. May we not only receive it, but embody it and do likewise. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen free to come up whenever you're ready.
pray a blessing over us before we go. And uh, we have a beautiful day outside awaiting us. I can see the sun is now out and the clouds are gone. Kind of symbolic, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I want to pray a special blessing over each one of us. May we know your love. May we know your grace. May we know your peace. And may we find our hope in you. Lord, our desire is to follow Jesus. Help us this week to look for opportunities in our world to serve others. Help us this week for look for opportunities to serve one another. Help us this week to look for opportunities to serve you in a way that no one would know but you. And Lord, I know as we do that, you're going to smile. You're going to smile brightly. Our life's going to change, and the life of another's going to change. Watch over and guard and protect us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Feel free to hang out. Feel free to go. And enjoy the remainder of our three-day weekend.